Hi, I'm Lawton from ChemTalk. This is one of our ChemTalk lab spaces here. And today we're gonna to be talking about how we did our oleic acid maze. So here's our uh, 3D printed maze that we're going to be using for the experiment where it has reservoirs in it. So you can put your uh, sodium hydroxide and your hydrochloric acid in. And the purpose of this experiment is basically to see whether or not we can solve a maze with food coloring using purely an acid-base reaction with the addition of oleic acid. So Lawton, tell us a little bit about the, the two sides of the maze and what goes in each, each section. Right, so the maze comprises of two main parts. There's a larger cavity here and a very small cavity here. Uh, originally you're supposed to do this experiment by putting hydrochloric acid sponge in the small side of the maze and oleic acid potassium hydroxide solution and the other side of the maze. Uh, we have actually used sodium hydroxide as opposed to potassium hydroxide and it works just fine. Um, so we have done it by flipping it around and done HCl in the big side and sodium hydroxide in the small side. What's the concept behind how the oleic acid helps solve the maze? All right. So in the, in the paper we saw online, the main driving mechanism for the food dye migration from one side of the maze to the other side of the maze is due to the surface tension gradient that is caused by the hydrogen ion gradient as well in the maze. So there's something about the oleic acid molecule according to the paper that makes this possible. Yeah, so something about the oleic acid molecule, supposedly oleic acid uh, has a certain deprotonation rate that can adjust the surface tension accordingly across the maze. So Lauden, let's let's create some of these mazes and solve it. Sort of show us exactly what we're gonna do and where you're gonna put it in the maze. Yep. So this is the sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, as I said, you wanna mix this till it's about pH 14. Doesn't need to be exact, but uh, mix it with water until it's pH 14. Then add in your oleic acid. You don't need a lot, uh, you just need a little bit. And when we were adding the oleic acid, we did notice that it did form some solid uh, precipitates. So if you have potassium hydroxide, we'd recommend using that, but it worked just fine with sodium hydroxide. So once you have that, those two mixed together, you wanna to put them in the small side of the maze right here. And you want to evenly distribute that mixture throughout the entire maze, make sure every little cavity and void on this half of the maze is filled. Do not fill the large cavity. That needs to be empty for now. So once you have it filled, you will take your hydrochloric acid and you will put your hydrochloric acid in the large side of the maze. Then once you have that, you will take any color food coloring. Uh, we used red, basically any color you have, except for yellow. Yellow does not show up very well. Uh, then you want to take your food coloring and put that in the acidic side of the maze or the basic side of the maze. but it generally works better if you put it on the basic side of the maze because by the time it reaches the acidic side of the maze, the color will start to disappear. Um, but it does work actually in reverse, believe it or not. All right, let's try it. Let's make one of these mazes and see if it can solve it. All right, so can you tell everyone how you, you made the maze and where the design came from and what did you use to 3D print it? Yeah, so I made the maze uh, using a Creality Ender 5 um, 3D printer. The way I did this is I, I found a maze on Thingiverse, which is a, a community file sharing website used exclusively for 3D printing files. So I'll link the guy's maze in the description. Additionally, I had to print a a base which I epoxied into the maze. Uh, that way we have our reservoirs that we need. How, how long did it take to, to, to print it and how much did the materials cost? Uh, 
It took about 20 to 30 minutes to print, so not very long. It's a really short print time. Material cost was 25 cents at most. So it's, it, it's really what is cheap. the materials made of? Uh, the material is made out of PLA, which is, uh, stands for polylactic acid. It's a very common 3D printer material. You can find it like really cheap online, so it's not expensive at all. And do you do anything to the maze to like waterproof it so it wouldn't absorb the oleic acid and the sodium hydroxide? Yep. And... I don't know if you can see that on video, but there's a slight sheen to it, and that's because I coated it with an automotive uh, clear coat. Um, the automotive clear coat, I don't even know if it's necessary. Uh, but I did it anyways, just because there might be some voids or some porosity to the print. So if you have clear coat, I'd recommend 3D printing it and clear coating it right after you're done. Anything else people should know about the, the 3D printing process? No, it's pretty straightforward other than that. I mean, it's, you can get 3D printers pretty cheap if this is something that you, that you really want to do. You can find them nowadays for less than 150 bucks. So if it's something you really want to do, go out and get you a 3D printer. And right? if any, any like fellow chemists or YouTubers like really want one of these, we could probably even make it for them, right? Oh yeah, if anyone wants one of these, I can make you one, no problem. Okay, great. All right, so uh, so that was pretty pretty amazing, huh? Oh yeah, yep, worked out great. Is this something that uh, teachers uh, can, can get the materials and do it for their students in the classrooms? Yep, as long as you follow the protocols and are very careful, uh, you can very easily do this with your teacher and your school or whatever, and it'll, yeah, it's a perfectly safe experience to do. All right, we're gonna have safety information in a link in the description. There is gonna be a part two of this video, right? Yep, there will definitely be a part two. We have a uh, something that? very crazy uh, that we did not expect while doing this and just constantly coming up with further questions about the mechanism, we have definitely come up with something that is very crazy. Uh, you definitely got to see part two. All right. All right. Part two is coming soon. Thanks.